Hey there everyone, my name's Adam Maripos Vox and welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. Your weekly show for tech news and updates and alerts and things like that. Uh, quick update, my birthday is tomorrow, so as far as social media goes, I may not be super present. Uh, this week we've got two graphics card news, news bits, two Google related news bits, and then two Windows 10 related news bits. Two, two, and two. Because why not? I, I'm doing this a little differently for the sake of time, as I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to throw this together here. So I am just recording my desktop instead of overlaying the images. I've zoomed in quite a bit, so you should be able to see it. If you can't, like, see everything for some reason, then I'm sorry. Uh, you can read the article with me. That's why I do post the link in the description so you can follow along instead of just watching the video, as the goal is to get hits back and forth between the videos and the post. But so N NVIDIA has settled a mul well, multiple class action lawsuits regarding the NVIDIA GTX 970 debacle where everyone blew everything out of proportion that, oh, they lied about how much memory is available on the 970 that, oh, it only has 3.5 gigabytes of RAM. My world has ended, even though that extra 0.5 gigabytes of slower memory has not really hurt anyone in the long run. And according to the Steam hardware service here, the 970 is the most popular graphics card of choice for gamers, and I have one on my machine as well. So, whenever the form is available, the form is currently not available, but whenever the sign-up form is available, I will be getting a nice $30 check for no apparent reason, but I'll take it. That's half a game or a tank of gas, I guess. <laughs> uh, but they, they are settling multiple class action lawsuits regarding the issue while admitting no fault, but they are paying... 30 bucks to every buyer, proportional to the damage done, which, you know, there isn't much damage done, and they're paying 1.3 million in attorney fees to help with the people who filed lawsuits against them. But they're still admitting no fault, which is fine with me, because I, I, I see it that way. Another bit of graphics card news, AMD has released, or announced, rather, a new graphics card that blows the 480 out of the water because it's not a competitor to the 480 at all. It's the Radeon Pro SSG. And with this graphics card, it has two PCIe 3.0 M.2 SSD lanes, which allows users to add up to one terabyte of M.2 flash memory to their graphics card of solid state memory, which basically lets them get up to a terabyte of essentially RAM to for, for frame buffers to do professional video work for video effects, 3D rendering, things like that, as some just like 1080p and 4k renders can use up to 64 gigabytes per frame per frame we don't even have 64 gigabytes of ram on a graphics card in the first place the new gtx or the new titan x has like 18 or 20 something gigabytes of ram but jesus this thing will cost you 10 grand on top of the m.2 set ssds that you have to get as well uh 10 grand but it is of course a very professional graphics card looks pretty cool i love workstation graphics cards it's one of those things where it's like the specs make me drool and make me wish I could have one in my system, but I know that I would never remotely put it like to use for its potential, so it wouldn't be worth getting or like begging for in the first place. <laughs> but it's pretty cool to see that they're able to do that now, that they're adding basically, uh, M uh, you know, SSD slots to a graphics card to act sort of as RAM. Next up, Google has stepped up to the plate to help combat the plethora of spam callers as of late, which... I've gotten a ton, like over the past year I have gotten at least like twice, two a week if not more now of a robot asking me, and they're called robocalls now, but a, a an automated system telling me that my Google business listing needs updated, that my Google business has been uh, nominated for some award, or just asking if I need services or a lot of crap, there's a lot of them. So unfortunately this is only available for Nexus and Android One users at the moment, but they have created a new built-in phone app instead of using third-party tools, which are still available for normal Android users, but that will automatically tell you, you know, basically if the call is a is suspected to be a spam caller, and then users can also report when a call that isn't shown as that is a spam caller to add to the database, kind of like my Web of Trust Chrome extension, where it tells you whether or not a website is trustworthy, you can contribute to it. It's coming out or it may be already out for Nexus and Android One users. Hopefully they bring it out to other Android versions in the future. That would be pretty cool. Also in Google News, they're finally giving us support for add-ons for Google Docs and Google Sheets on mobile. 
I ha I, I use third-party add-ons for Google Drive so heavily. It's very, the, a lot of them have very much helped my workflow, which is why I have a pro subscription for Google Drive nowadays because I use it so heavily. But the ad, the the add-ons have never been supported in the mobile app for some reason. So currently, just for or coming soon for Android. Actually, it may already be available for Android only, Docs and Sheets only. But for the Docs and Sheets apps, there are now some third-party add-ons. It's not all of them. It's not they didn't just magically make all of the desktop ones work with Android. Uh, there are just a few specific ones available at the moment, but they are the very important ones like DocuSign, uh, Google Classroom, EasyBib, things like that. And hopefully we'll see more of them transfer over as well. Exciting news. Pretty happy about that. And then we have some Windows 10 news. I called it last week. I said I bet they're not going to end that free upgrade period because they want as many people to upgrade as possible. And that's what they did. They said, hey. If you're using assistive technologies, if you're handicapped in some way, if you're using accessibility tools, maybe you didn't see our 5 million upgrade notifications, maybe you couldn't read the millions of pop-ups we sent you saying, hey, you can upgrade to Windows 10 for free. So if you're using those tech, if you're an old person, if you're someone who is hard of seeing or hard of hearing, or anything really, you can upgrade to Windows 10 still. And the best part is, we're not going to bother to check who's actually using this tool. So hey guys. Here's another tool you can still use to upgrade to Windows 10 for free. I called it. I called it. I fucking called it. Ah. Um, the, at the moment, the, their website's actually down. I can't even access, like, any Microsoft websites at the moment. Uh, it's They're either being DDoSed or something. I keep clicking the link, and I even Googled it, because this isn't even the link I found from, like, The Verge or whatever. Uh, Windows 10 upgrade accessibility. Like, none of the websites for Microsoft.com are, like, loading. Yeah, no, none of them are loading, so I don't know if they're getting DDoSed or what, but there's just an EXE that'll, like, trigger the upgrade that you download from their website and be on your way once it once it's working. And by the way, uh, I'm recording this on Monday because I have to record in advance or the show doesn't go up, uh, but assuming today is Tuesday, the Windows 10 anniversary update has come out. It's scheduled to come out on Tuesday. I'm hopefully going to do some videos on some of the updates. I have no way of preparing for it until it's out to know, you know, how they're rolling it out, how I might get a hold of it myself, and so on. But it's a free update that's changing a lot about uh, the Windows 10 ecosystem in a good way. We're getting improvements to Cortana. We're getting a new Skype app, finally, so it can stop being a flying piece of crap. By the way, they've also put out a new Linux app, which I will be doing a video on when I can. Um, it's only an alpha at the moment, and it's fairly buggy. The Verge has an article of the best things that they know of so far that's coming to anniversary updates, such as Windows Inc. for tablets. Finally, I don't know why it took them so long to get that out. Extensions are coming to Microsoft Edge, LOL. Uh, improvements to Cortana, dark themes, UI tweaks, set your time zone automatically, Windows Hello, whatever. Uh, Windows 10 and Xbox One cross-platform apps finally coming. We've been promised this for a while. We'll finally start seeing some of that. Bash on Windows, I hear testing of that is going well so i'm excited for that there's this weird thing they have here that i didn't even hear about in the first place but project to pc not project project uh it's a way to it's like remote desktop but from like your phone or something this isn't very specific so we'll have to see when it comes out and that might be an exciting cool thing to do a video on i've actually been using windows 10's or windows is built in remote desktop lately it's a fairly cool program uh, that's way better than TeamViewer if you're controlling computers over the same network. And I can't believe I've never tried it before. So a video on that's coming soon as well. New Skype app. Again, Skype's been terrible ever since Microsoft took over. And there was a big crash a couple years ago where no one could connect and all sorts of stuff. They're finally getting that up and they've they've released an alpha of a new Linux app as well. They finally remembered that they put a Linux app out years ago and never updated it. So they're getting caught up. You can sync your notifications to your... PC from your phone using Cortana. Not sure if I want to use that due to the privacy issues of using Cortana, but it's a very cool feature that would be pretty cool to use. And then just like with Xbox, they're switching to Windows being a service instead of a direct sellable platform, just like with Xbox One and so on. So this was kind of pushed through very quickly, but this is this week's tech news. Again, tomorrow is my birthday, Wednesday, my birthday. So don't know how active I will be on social media. But this is the news. This is what you got. Tetra Ninja himself, as Nick has also posted a couple updates to the channel and stuff since he's been inactive this month. You should go check that out. And if you want to know what's going on with my channel, I posted a channel update on Saturday. Go back and watch it. I 
Lots, or I revamped my Patreon. I finally updated it after two or three years. I finally updated it to be caught up with what I'm doing with my channel now. And in doing so, I lost a patron. Ow, I hit my mic stand. <laughs> like, the, the person I lost didn't actually contribute any money anyway. But they were just subscribing and then unpledging and then repledging. But I revamped my Patreon to actually reflect my tech content instead of the Let's Play Together stuff that isn't actually happening at, happening at the moment. If you'd like to help keep content free, please do so. Because every video is brought to you by our Patreon subscribers and it helps me do what I want. And... If we can keep this going, then the channel can do some really, really cool stuff. Keep that in mind. As little as a dollar could help out a lot. A lot. So, that's it for this week's tech news. Uh, Microsoft is also putting out a competitor to If This Then That with their Flow app. That's coming soon. Uh, I had a couple other... There's an article on reverse engineering the YouTube algorithm if you want that. I'll link that up somewhere. There's a new app that'll turn a single JPEG into an animated GIF, but it costs like $400. So I was going to look into it for a video, but I'm not spending $400 on an app for a video. Unless someone wants to donate that money. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Moving on. <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, got a couple tutorials coming soon, things like that. But not a whole lot of housekeeping this week. So thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, smash the like button. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos if you haven't already. Leave me a comment down below with what your favorite piece of news was. Had a lot of views last week, probably due to the rip kick-ass torrents leading story. So there probably won't be as many this time, but it was worth a shot. I still needed to make it. Uh, my name's been Adam Repos Vox. I will see you next week.